because I have a reason for doing that. Because you've just given us a clear picture. You, I mean, you, it's like a picture scroll. You've given us the picture of Jesus Christ on the cross, about to die, or whether he died. You know, they have despised me. You know, uh, uh, they are attacking me. Why are you far away from my salvation? You just read that. He, Jesus is talking to God. Why, is, why, God, are you far away from saving me? In other words, he himself, he deserved to be saved. Is that what it means? They despise me. They left me out to the wolves. They are eating. Why, why, why are you far away from saving me? So how can I depend on someone that himself needs to be saved? He's crying for God to save him. That means he himself cannot save. If he cannot save himself, if he is crying for someone to save him, how can he? So that means the sin that we all created. We, we did so much sin that, that, that God cannot say, look, you have sinned. God is so forgiving, most merciful. He couldn't say that. He said, look, uh, I'm not going to forgive you because the apple that Adam ate is so big that somebody has to die for you. I'm going to wait. There's going to be a time that me, myself, I'm going to enter into a womb of a Mary and then she's going to give birth to me and then my creation, they're going to catch me, beat me up and they're going to suspend me on a tree and they're going to leave me with a napkin before I will forgive mankind. That's how it sounds. God cannot say, Adam, if you ate apple, you are all forgiven. And in the book of Matthew, God, he said, uh, allow little children to come to me, for they are like unto the angels. Jesus Christ is referring to children like angels. That means they are sinless. He said that in the book of Matthew. Suffer little children away from me. Allow them to come closer to me because they are like unto the angel. Because they are sinless. What kind of God is that? That Adam ate apple. Was I there when Adam ate the apple? Why would God arrest me for what Adam did? Would the law, uh, penal code of America do the same thing? That I'm not there. Somebody, my ancestor committed a crime. I'm going to go to jail. That is injustice. So if God actually is sending Jesus Christ to jail, that is celestial injustice. If there is someone that needs to save himself, God should have come and save as mankind instead of sending his son. That's like neglect. That is like child abuse. The son of God who never commit any crime, God had take him and throw him under the bus to save other mankind. That is child abuse. If God is here, according to based on what you said, we will arrest him as being child abuse for using his own children. To save mankind. How about him going there to save? Why would he do that? So the whole edifice of what they die in the redemption, the atonement, the crucifixion, it is a big, big topic. I have dealt with that on YouTube. I have debated over, I don't know, 15, 20 times. You will see on uh, was Christ crucified, the truth about crucifixion, who was on the cross. Did, I have given all the answers, lack of time. I can't go into all that details. I would like for him to give you my, you go on YouTube, you see most of my lectures and debate and everything and I'll leave my number if there's anything you want me to discuss I don't mind we could do it on zoom even right now it's unfortunately you cut me at the wrong time I've got to move but you make me to stay people are waiting for me over there to go give a lecture this and that this and that so I'm just it's a, it's a pleasure meeting you and everything and I wish you all the best and definitely I would like to come back again so we could do it again inshallah yeah, thank you very much for coming thank you. You like an hour. <laughs> and, uh, we have something to give you this is a copy of our um, uh, Quran. It's an English Quran and some Arabic talk by some Arab Shifa. And then there's a CD too. You can listen to it. And this is yours too. MashaAllah. Ah, you are yes. MashaAllah. Ya Gumla, Alhamdulillah. Allah. SubhanAllah. What can I say? Alhamdulillah. As I was saying about our learning, mm. uh, we were taught that uh, one of the people on the cross right. uh, a challenge Jesus that uh, was, yeah. uh, <laughs> save us. Uh, save us uh, I forgot you should have given me time to mention that. I <laughs> if there's any question, maybe you want to ask me intimate question about Islam or, or, or you know what, what is happening. Because if you mentioned about Jesus save you and uh, you know, he died for you, so to speak, right? I mean, he died for you, right? Jesus died for you. You know, so your, your son is, is, is taken away from you because Jesus died for you. In other words, there's a guarantee for you that you're going to be get, uh, getting salvation. But uh, at the same time, we read in the book of uh, uh, 
uh, Matthew 19, uh, 16, uh, somebody came to Jesus Christ and said, Good master, what good thing must I do to enter heaven? That this person wants to go to heaven. He saw Jesus Christ on the way. He said, Good master, what good thing must I do to enter heaven eternally? Jesus got angry. Why does thou call me good for? Why do you have to give me all this lofty name? Why does thou have, uh, call me good for? The only one that is good is the one in heaven. But if thou want to enter heaven eternal, you get eternal life, keep the laws and the commandment of Moses. He didn't say, wait, I'm going to die, you know. But he said, if you want to enter life, keep the law and the commandment of Moses. And then we read again the Matthew 5, 7, 5, 7, 5, 17. He said, do not think, Jesus is speaking, do not think that I've come to destroy the law of Moses and the prophet. No, I have not come to destroy, I've come to fulfill. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but a single door from the law of Moses shall not pass till all is fulfilled. And whosoever do the law of Moses and teach someone to do it shall become great. But whosoever cancel a single law, law of a single law, cancel, shall become least. In other words, Jesus Christ did not come with any new law. He followed the law and the commandment of Moses. And so the Isaiah, which Jeremiah, all of them, he believed them and he followed them. And Jesus Christ followed the law of Moses. He didn't come with a new law at all. So what happened is that in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 18, verse 20, God was speaking to Ezekiel. He said, all, all soul are mine. All soul. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. This is justice. The soul that sinned, it shall die. The father shall not bear the iniquity of the son, nor the son bear the iniquity of the father. The wickedness of the wickedness shall be upon him, and the righteousness shall be upon him. But if the wicked turn around and do that which is good, I, God Almighty, I will blot his son. I will never remember it. So what God wants from me and you is to follow the commandment that is given. Not for somebody dying for you. Because there is not a single... It, it, is, it is said about him, but he himself didn't actually say, okay, I'm going to die for you. He said, well, keep the law of the commandment. The law and the commandment. And he said, just so many things. So whatever Jesus did, we believe. He walked on water, we believe. He quickened the dead, we believe. But all this thing as a behest of God. There's not a single verse or chapter or by inferring where Jesus said, I did it. No, never. John 5.30, I can of my own self do nothing. The way I hear, I judge. And my judgment is good because I do not take my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. Because I, by the power of God, cast out the heaven. Look, he's a human being, just like you and I. But to highest elevation, among the best, closer to God Almighty. We believe that. So Jesus Christ is us. We name our children Isa to commemorate Jesus Christ. We name our wife and our daughters Mary to commemorate Mary. In the Quran, we have the chapter dedicated to Mary, the mother of Jesus. We have a chapter dedicated to the family of Jesus, Sotul Ali Imran. We have a chapter dedicated to Jesus Christ and the disciple, Sotul Ma'ida, Quran chapter 4. So all this, we glorify Jesus, but we don't worship him as a son. And we don't believe he's the son of God preeminently because God does not beget. And if you say God have a son, again, meaning Jesus, in the book of Exodus chapter 2, verse 22, he said, Israel is my son. God speaking, Israel, who's Israel? Jacob, Israel is my son, even my firstborn emphasis. So clearly, Israel is the firstborn of God, according to the Bible. So we read in the book of Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 13, Israel is my son and Ephraim is my firstborn. We read in the second, uh, second Chronicles 21, he will build a house for me, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. Who? Solomon. In the book of Luke, chapter 3, Adam is my son. Again, in the Psalms of David, chapter 2, verse 5, David said, and I will declare the glory. And the Lord hath said unto me, David, thou art my son, thou art my begotten son. So David is also begotten son. But the word begotten is eschewed in Islam. Because if you look at the dictionary, I mean, you, you speak English, you are an English person. Look at the word begotten. The Miriam Collegiate Dictionary and the Webster Dictionary. They say, begotten belongs to the lowest animal function of sex. Which in Islam we eschew. How did Abraham beget Isaac? With his wife. So how did God beget? No, we don't use that word. God is so sanctified in Islam. 
that we are very careful of the word that we use. So in Islam, you would love and believe in Jesus more than what the Christian theologians are telling us. With all due respect, Islam is so clean, it's so pure. I don't want to go to hell. I want to do what Abraham did because Christian, Jew, and Muslim, we follow Abraham. We all said that through, you know, his children. So how did Abraham worship? We say we follow Ibrahim. You follow Ibrahim? Of course. Jesus Christ, the son of Abraham, the son of David. We follow them all. But how did God make his messengers and prophets worship? That's why we came here, to worship God Almighty, to do his bid. So Abraham in the book of Genesis 17 verse 3, and Abraham fell on his face. And he prayed and the Lord spoke unto him. In the book of Exodus chapter 40 verse 31, and Moses and Aaron, and the son of Aaron, Eliza, put water at the entrance of the tabernacle, and they washed their hands and their feet before entering in the temple, and they fall with their face to the ground and worship the Lord. And on and on and on, even Jesus. He worshipped. Who did he worship? Can God worship God? No. In the book of Matthew 26, 39, and Jesus went a little further and he fell on his face and he prayed, prayed. And he said, oh my father, in the book of Mark chapter 14, verse 35, and he said, Abba, Abba, I know that all things are possible with thee. And he went and fell with his face to the ground and worshiped the Lord. In the book of Luke 22, 39, being in an agony, he even went a little further and fell with his face to the ground and worshiped the God. And he was crying. So Jesus could not be a God. God is omnipotent, omniscient, the creator of the heaven and earth, the sea, the ocean, the galaxies, everything. God does not perish. He's not subjected into the weakness of man, such as death, hungry, going to the toilet, eating, being born. Imagine God coming from a woman. Subhanallah. You believe? Imagine God Almighty, the creator, came from a woman. I don't want to mention that. Do you believe that? And then he was nurtured. So in Islam, we are very careful to follow the law and the commandments. That is what the Bible said will get you into heaven. That's what the Bible, I didn't say that. Moses, Isaiah, Jesus, all of them said the same thing. None of them changed everything except what happened later when Paul came into the picture. With all due respect, Paul had never seen Jesus Christ with his eyes. Never. He only imagined a vision that he saw on his way to Damascus. That's what he said. He saw him. So... We follow what Jesus said. You get a red, red letter Bible, you open, it's only 11 pages, the red letter Bible, what Jesus said. So from Matthew to, 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 to Revelation, Jesus didn't say that. People are writing their books. If there is more time, I would prove clearly without a single share of doubt that Matthew didn't write the book of Matthew. Luke didn't write that. John didn't write his book. None of them, they didn't write the book. The evidence is inside. But you are into it. You don't know. Now we have to analyze it. And clearly you could see that he doesn't write the book. But before I give you the speaker to ask a question, let me say one thing about the book of Matthew. Who wrote the Matthew? He said, according to Matthew. It's a weak argument. According to it. It should be by Matthew. According to it's a weak argument. Who put it there? Well, according to him. There's no surety. You know? If Matthew wrote the book of Matthew, read the book of Matthew, chapter 9, verse 9. That's an example. Matthew 9, 9. Let me read it from my head. What it says. It says, while he, Jesus Christ, was going out on the way. Listen to the English. It's, you taught me English. It's your language. And I'm using it here. It says, while he, Jesus Christ, was going out on the way, he saw a man sitting on the task collector's table. And he said, follow me. And Matthew rose and followed him. Did Matthew wrote this. If, Jesus, if Matthew wrote the book, that be, while Christ was going out on the way, he saw me sitting down. He said, follow me. And I rose and followed him. This, that means somebody's writing the books. Somebody's writing about what happened between Matthew and Jesus. But conveniently, according to Matthew, Luke was not even a disciple of Jesus. Luke had never seen Jesus Christ at all in his life. And he didn't claim to have had the Holy Ghost to inspire him to write the book of Luke. So in the book of Luke, he said, while many are writing all these books, it seems good to me also to write you an orderly account, most excellent Theophilus. According to him, he said, people are writing about what happened to the Christ. I think it's good for me to write because I'm more smart. I'm, you know. So he didn't claim Holy Ghost. And Mark was not a disciple of Jesus. According to Josephus, when Mark 
Jesus was walking in Jerusalem. Mark was less than four years old. Mark was not in the four, the 12 disciples selected. It's not, his name is not there. Luke's name is not there. We don't know which John, because if you read the book of John, there are just so many things to believe that John didn't write it. All these things are important information that we need to decipher. For lack of time, maybe. All right, he's asking me, how did I become a Muslim and what are the changes that uh, happened to me when I became a Muslim? In other words, what is the benefit I get from being a Muslim? Okay, um, first of all, I was born and raised a Muslim. Uh, my great great grandfathers and everything Muslim. I've never been a Christian in my life, and I'm a Muslim. And Alhamdulillah, um, all praise belongs to God Almighty. That uh, me being a Muslim, I, I, I don't know. There's, there's, there's nothing on earth today that uh, I would take in replacement of me being a Muslim. I'm, I'm a Muslim because I happen to follow the trend of all the major prophets Moses, Jeremiah, Isaiah, Nehemiah, Jesus, John the Baptist all of them were Muslims from the very beginning you know because uh, if you you are a Christian right so if you show you are a Christian the word Christianity Jesus Christ never heard those words in his life at the time that he existed there was no Christianity the name was given 325 AD after he left the earth in the Nicene Council so Christ, if you say Christ, Christ, he never heard those words. It was after him that the word Christianity was created. And the word Christianity is not even in the Bible. But the word Christian is in the Bible. It happens in three places only. Agrippa was saying that you have almost made me close to becoming a Christian. And the word Christian was used at the very beginning, if you know, as a derogatory name. They used to call those who follow Christ, Christ. Hey, Christian, come here. Like, excuse me, you nigger. It's a very bad name. But this is the, 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 the old name being used against the black man. The same thing with the word Christian. If you know the etymology or the history of all this information, they called them Christian. It was an insult back then. Hey, Christian. They were few in number and they were like shying away. But now Paul said, okay, if they call us a Christian, so they, they, they modify it to accept it. The name is being used upon them so much so that they accept it. So you've, uh, it's, a, it's a big misconception when you say that you follow Christ and that you are a Christian. Christ never know anything about Christianity at all in his life. But uh, if you uh, if just believe who Christ actually is. Um, first, I just want to hear your story. My story. This is my story. I'll ask another question then. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ask, could, ask any question you want. Yeah. Maybe I could share my story of how I became a Christian. Mm. Um, and then I can ask you a question uh, about... Okay, briefly. Don't go deep because... I got a lot of things to do. I'm going to go on radio. I'm going to go do something. So just briefly, how do you become a Christian? Just let me know. Yeah. Yeah. So I uh, I did not grow up a Christian. Okay. And so uh, attended a church building every so often, once or twice. God, there is no way where Jesus made it remote, you know, suggesting that he's God. There is not a sick. If Jesus Christ is God, why why wouldn't he tell us? If that is what it requires us to believe in order to get heaven, you should make it. I am God, worship me. Why hiding? There is not a single place. You infer, well, I think Jesus Christ wanted to make him. Mm -mm. He must, look, this is a revelation. This is about matter of death and life. This is a matter about going to hell and heaven. If he is God, he should make it clear, unambiguous statement that is so succinct. He should say, I am God, worship me or I am God incarnate. He should make this statement. Why is it that he leave it to the people outside him after he left the earth and they are the ones that interpreted this. They make us believe that that's what it means. And you've mentioned about him, the book of Isaiah. He is the everlasting. He is the counselor. Where? He is the Iman. I tell people that Jesus Christ is not Emmanuel. Whoever called him Emmanuel. I was speaking in Tennessee in the Christian diocese. I said, if you can show me one place where anybody called Jesus Christ Emmanuel as he walk on earth, if there's any water here, I don't mind dip myself in and become baptized. Nobody ever called him Emmanuel. Nobody ever called him everlasting God. Everlasting God? Where? How? When? He kept all these fancy names. Nobody ever called him Emmanuel as he walked the earth. Where? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, these are the gospel four. None of them explain that he is Emmanuel at all. It is just an inference. But the Jewish 
who know the Old Testament more than the Christians, they never think of Jesus to be Emmanuel. And Jesus never said, Emmanuel means God is with us. It's a name. We have, we have so many different names, meaning beautiful things. So if Jesus is Emmanuel, people have so many names. Joshua, Yeshua, all these things. It make, it, there is meaning to it. Me, I'm looking for a substance where Jesus say, I am God or worship me. Or any of the disciples of Jesus ever worship him. None of them came very close to worship him. Even the leader of the disciples himself, who is Peter, in the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verse 22, Peter said, Ye men of Israel, hear this word, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, a man approved by God amongst you, which you yourself know. A man, he said, he didn't say a God, a man approved by God amongst you, with wonders and signs and miracles, which God did unto him. He never do all these things that you are claiming that he did, and therefore he deserved to be God. Where? How? When even one miracle, Jesus Christ never performed a single miracle in his life by himself. Where? Which miracle? Which mi walk on water? Ask him. Where did he get it from? The woman that touched him and she was healed? Ask him. The blind, the Bartimaeus? Ask him. He didn't do it on his own. It's God who gave it to him. That means there is someone higher than him. And that is the God that he worshipped. Moses parted the Red Sea. Was he God? Parted the Red Sea? That's serious business. Was he God? No. Joshua, he made the sun to stay for 24 hours. The sun, which is 93 million miles away from the earth, the sun. Joshua raised his hand and he prayed and the sun stayed so that the Jewish can fight and win their war. Was he God? Daniel, in the last... Miracle is given by God to many, many prophets. E Elisha, somebody died, he raised him up. You know that. Elijah and Elisha, all of them raised people from the dead. Elisha feed people with few bread. They did the, they copy what Jesus Christ did. They did the same thing. So miracle is not a test. The greatest miracle is to follow the laws and the commandment of Jesus. That is what he said we should do. But for some reason, they make him a God. He is God. Who is God? Jesus. He's never said he's God. And there is not a, he never mentioned anything about him being God. It was after him that people began to come like Paul and this and that. I'm not, look, I need a solid proof where Jesus said, I am God. I am the son of God, physical son of God or whatever. Can you imagine a God like that? So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's very, it's just unbelievable, you know, that uh, still people have this kind of faith. We should worship the one God that deserves to be worshipped that we can't even see. The God of Moses, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Abraham, Jesus, and Muhammad. This, are, this is the God that we should be bowing down and worship. As Jesus did, bow down. And, all of them bow down and worship. We bow down and worship just like the Abraham. So today, if Jesus Christ come here today, we say, Shalom Aleichem. Jesus, if he walk here today, he will say to me, Shalom Aleichem. That's, what they, that's how they greet themselves. That means, Salam Alaikum. Wa Aleichem Shalom. Navim, we say Nabi, a prophet. Rushul, Rasul. Prophet, a messenger, Qutub, Kitab in Arabic, which means a book, Bushir, Bashar, Flesh, Ilah, Eli, Eleh, Allah. Yeah, we, we're so very close to Jesus Christ. But if you read the Bible in English, you are absolutely, you wouldn't see anything about Jesus. Why? Because what you have is English. It could be in Japanese. Did, did, did what he said? No, you read in a vernacular. Get the original book and then you hear. For example, if I say, Muhammad is in, my, in, in your Bible. You'd be, you'd be surprised. You say, come on, what do you mean? Muhammad is mentioned in there, but because it's translated into vernacular, into my language, Hausa, Dagati, Fulani, German, Swedish, English, how are you going to see what Jesus actually said? I give you the songs of, songs of Solomon chapter 5, verse 16. Songs of Solomon 5, 16. I'm going to show you Muhammad in your book. Song of Solomon 5, 16. But I'm going to read in English what is there. Then I'm going to read it in Hebrew again. It says, his mouth is sweet. His skin is like that of the Lebanese. He's altogether lovely. He is my friend. Oh, daughters of Jerusalem. In English. You don't see Muhammad there. But if you translate, You see? So if you get the original, you know, Jewish uh, Hebrew Bible or uh, Aramaic, Aramaic is 
80% Arabic. So we know exactly what Jesus did. But in, in translation, you, it will not get you anywhere. And the fact that you, you give yourself to Jesus Christ, now you are saved. People believe in atheism and they are saved. People believe in agnosticism and they are saved. People believe in nihilism and they are saved. People believe in Hinduism and they are saved. They feel comfortable. I've given myself to Abraham and Vida, uh, Shiva. I'm saved. So that is just an introspective word that you can use for yourself. Everybody can be saved. So that doesn't say anything. People are in different religions and they are saved. And they feel comfortable and they are at peace. But that is not the essence. The essence is to worship. What did Jesus ask us to do? Jesus, Moses, Isaiah, Jeremiah, all of them. What did they do? That's exactly what Muslims do. Exactly. <laughs> I got a lot of things to go. <laughs> I didn't. Um, sin is to sin against God is a willing transgression. You willingly transgress against God Almighty. That, that means you are a sinner. So you sin. But don't forget we are human beings. Your Bible says all have all short to the glory of God. So we live on the grace and mercy of God. That's why he's most gracious, most merciful. Most gracious, most merciful. All forgiven. God does not, the book of Ecclesiastes, the 12th, it says, listen to the whole matter. Follow God and the commandment for upon it, God will judge you the day of judgment. I didn't say that. It's the book of Ecclesiastes, the 12th. He said, listen to the whole matter. After everything is said and done, keep the law and the commandment of God and follow the commandment. For the Lord God Almighty will judge you based upon what you did on earth. And that's exactly what all the prophets said. That's exactly what Jesus said. That's exactly what Muhammad said. That's exactly what the original gospel, the evangel, the injil of Jesus Christ said. So nobody is saying it's perfect. I'm going to fall. But the thing is, I'm going to have to rise up and see God's forgiveness and uh, you know, uh, 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 mercy. And then I'm going to keep continue. Nobody is perfect. We will fall and we shall fall. Even Jesus Christ, when he was at the cross, according to what we read in your belief, what did he say? Eloi, Eloi, lama shabaktani. In Arabic, Allah, Allah, lama taraktani. <laughs> See how close the Arabic and Hebrew is? That's why we know the fact. We know the truth. We know exactly what it is. Allah, Allah, lama taraktani. In Hebrew, Eloi, Eloi, lama shabaktani. You see how close it is? 